I'm Brian Bolio, CEO, Chief Economist of ITR Economics, bringing you this special uh, update. Um, it's, it's important news. It's good news. Uh, third quarter GDP numbers are out, put out by the BEA, came out this morning. Today is the 28th of October. And the third quarter GDP was up, obviously, um, easily up in uh, nominal dollar terms, but in real dollar terms. And that's where GDP had been stagnant in the first half of this year. Uh, it was up uh, at a 2.6% annualized growth rate. And for us, we're talking 312 12, 12 rates of change, 312 is what's relevant for GDP. And that's a 1.8% increase over year over year. So whether you look at the 1.8 or the 2.6, the economy is clearly growing below what's called trend over below the long-term trend. But it was very important that we get this positive number in the third quarter. Um, it was being driven by uh, strength in exports, strength in personal consumption, um, strength in government spending, both federal, state, and local, and even more important than the government spending, strength in what we call our non-residential construction. Government calls it fixed, non-residential fixed investment. Um, and as, as we've talked about, non-res is a lagging part of the economy, so it makes sense that it's going to be strong. The consumer, uh, we think, is going to continue to exhibit strength because, and this is also very important, real uh, personal income was was up. Um, if you look at it without transfer payments, it was still up, although it is running a little bit below last year. But after a sluggish first half, we're seeing uh, real wages getting caught up with the rate of inflation. And as Grace from our staff has mentioned numerous times, there's a, there's a natural lag there. Inflation happens, and by the time the corresponding wages get passed through, there is a little bit of a lag, and we're seeing that happen now. We expect our forecast is that those real wages are going to continue to rise, particularly given the state of the labor market. What does that all mean? It means, well, when we look at exports in the strong U.S. dollar, continuing to give us a positive trade balance situation, and in terms of those exports, uh, we now have positive leading indicators in place that are for Australia, uh, Brazil, Japan, and China. Uh, and that's very important in terms of keeping the export numbers looking better than the import numbers because we expect the USD is going to stay strong uh, through mid-23 approximately. That'll be a different trends talk. So we think that the exports are going to continue to look good. We think personal consumption is going to continue to look good. And we think non-residential construction, all the leading indicators say that that's going to continue to improve. And that also, by the way, is being helped by that nationalism phenomenon that we've talked about. So we expect GDP is going to be up in the fourth quarter. We expect it's going to have an iffy quarter, 1Q 2023. Um, so we're calling for it really to be largely a flat quarter uh, and then get some more rise going in the second quarter and the third quarter um, of 2023 and the fourth quarter as well. We are not looking at a recession um, stemming from these higher interest rates. People who are propagating that thought don't understand the timeline. It's not an instantaneous economy in which we live. GDP grew and it's going to continue to go up, which means the opportunities are there for your businesses if you understand that it's a balanced risk. It, it, you can't not take risks. But when you have a favorable economic wind coming over your left shoulder, um, it's a little easier to take those risks, invest in your businesses, and make those businesses grow. Not only are we looking at GDP improving and incomes going up in the third quarter, which is really cool, uh, we're also seeing that we've made strides in the disinflation portion of things. And it probably isn't fast enough for the Federal Reserve. They're probably still going to push interest rates up, the Fed funds rate up in November. But the PCE, the Personal Consumption Expenditure Price Index, in the third quarter came in 4.2% above one year earlier. So a 312 or 4.2%. All right. In the second quarter, that 312 was at 7.3%. That's a significant deceleration in inflation. Core inflation staying high because of uh, the services sector, the services part of what we spend our money on, goods are not showing that same sort of inflation. That has ramifications for businesses. Um, and the 
the Fed is not going to be able to effectively control the service type of inflation because that has to do with the labor shortage more than anything else. Um, so that's another risk we'll watch for. Thank you for listening. This has been ITR Economics CEO, Chief Economist, Brian Bolio. Take care.